What is up, everybody? It's combine time. I'm your host, Cameron Forcier, dressed as fellow Hitting the Field member Grant Wheeler, but if he was a Jets fan. New Call of Duty just came out, so I'm sure y'all can guess what I did the past few days. Hence, I was Kyler Murray. I'm already almost first prestige. Vikings won, but Kirk Tober's over, but more on the Vikings later when Tyler Brownrigg and Lexi Zolo join me to talk about teams that are on Fraud Watch. Speaking of frauds, the Packers, garbage. I love it. Incredible. After that, Combine regulars Ray and Nathaniel sit on the couch to spread Giants propaganda and talk about surprising teams and players as the NFL season essentially reaches the halfway mark. Combine episode 8 starts now. Things gon' change when I really hit the field. Undefeated chance, man, you know what's the deal. Trying to find a kid, I'm in a field doing drills. Boy, you just a sucker, you ain't never keep it real. Three rings in my hand, I'm a warrior to the max. When I hang it up, they gon' have to give me plaques. Step up in the building and I only bring the facts. When I make a highlight, they gon' replay run it back, okay? Always locked in, I don't got time to lack. Saying he the best, he could take a lap. Batted 1,000 when you check the stats. Boy, is you ready? You ain't got to ask. Welcome back. I'm joined by Lexi Zolo and Tyler Brownrigg to talk about a huge problem in the NFL this season, fraudulent teams. Lexi, Tyler, introduce yourself. My name's Lexi, and I'm dressed up as a bunny today. Oh, I'm Tyler Brownrigg, and I mean, there's a lot of fraudulent teams, and uh, Cameron is uh, our favorite team, the Vikings. I'm, I'm scared about him, Cameron. I, I want to say we're good. I feel like it's, this might be it. I'm, I'm, I don't want to say it out loud yet, but I'm thinking it. Define it. <laughs> what, the, what, is, what is it for you? I don't want to say the words. Okay, I, I, I'm picking up what you're putting down. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, yes, the Vikings are 6-1. and one. Yes, the Vikings are somehow good. I don't get it. Um, I don't, I, we're fraudulent. I don't believe it. We've played such a, a soft schedule. The only good team we've played is the Eagles, and we got hammered by them. You can say it's Monday Night Football, Kirk Cousins is bad on Monday Night Football, it doesn't matter. We played the Saints in London, we beat them, and they were super injured. I just don't believe in the Vikings. I mean, Dalvin Cook has not been great this year. J Justin Jefferson's still great. Thielen looks old. Defense looks rough. I just... The, problem, the, the biggest problem has been the defense, because it's just, we don't blitz enough. Daniel Hunter's in coverage, but the big thing that I like about this Vikings team this year is that we weren't having last year is... Last year, we kept losing all these close games in like the final two minutes, blowing leads. We're winning them this year. We're winning these close games. Now, they aren't against the best of teams. But we're winning them. But we're winning them. It's, I, I think I saw a stat. We're 5-1 and one in one-score games. And for reference, to start last year, we were 1-5 in, in one, one yeah, and seven in one-score games. We started last year good, but we just could not win. And now we're winning. I don't... Yeah, our defense is not good. We're 28th in yards allowed per game. Like, we get shredded in the air. We play the Dolphins. It's just rough. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm going to have to go with the Giants for my team because, I mean, they had the fourth easiest schedule, and now they have the third hardest schedule, so it's just going to be downhill from here for them. But uh, Brian Dable has done a great job at um, uh, changing the culture of the Giants. I mean, he's really turning this team around, but I mean, I just don't see them doing that great anymore. I mean, yesterday, I mean, Richie James, I mean, the two turnovers costed them 10 points yesterday. I mean, that's just, that's horrendous. I mean, it costed them the game. Um, I really, I mean, Daniel Jones, I mean, he's, he's not the best quarterback still. I mean, all he does is just pass it off to Saquon Barkley, which, I mean, he is carrying the Giants this season. He is our best offensive player we have. I mean, shout out to Darius Slayton with 232 yards. He's our only receiver with over 200 yards. But, I mean, Barkley carries the game. I mean, every good play is usually because of him. And, I mean, I feel like we need to get Daniel Jones out of here. I mean, with winning so many games, though, it's going to be hard for Dable to do that. But um, I, th I think it's hard to get rid of Daniel Jones. The Giants are faced with that problem because Daniel yeah. Jones is – coming into this year, Daniel Jones was on the hot seat. They kind of didn't know what they were going to do. And then they're winning games somehow. Like it's yeah, they were projected to be awful, but now they're great. And you know they do have, they still have two games against the Eagles, two games against the Cowboys in their division. They're they already played the Cowboys. Well, one game oh, no, against one the Cowboys. Game. They, they already lost against the Cowboys. They already lost against the Cowboys. They joined the, they, they joined the Cooper elites, Rush lost to Cooper Rush, Rush Club. Club. That's right, that is right. I, I just think, I don't think they've beaten anyone impressive other than the Ravens. They've had a very easy schedule. The Ravens, and, but, and the, the reason, I think they can still make the playoffs. Maybe they sneak in in like that seven seed. 
but they don't oh, yeah. have a wide receiver. They don't have a. You need a real wide receiver core to win. They don't in have the NFL. one. They, oh, they, they, don't. they entered yeah. this week without a 200 yard receiver. That's and they, not and they sustainable. They only have one. It's not Kenny Galladay, still yet to score a touchdown and is still injured. That's one of the worst contracts ever now. Kenny, or, uh, Kadarius Tony, not on the team anymore. Wasn't playing. Still in Shepard towards ACL. It's, it's just, just yeah. no, nothing's going right for them in the wide receiver room. But this this team is a Saquon injury away, I think, from just falling apart. With Tony leaving, that takes away from our receiving core, which was already less than average. And, I mean, I do think we have a good chance at getting into the playoffs, but I would definitely see a first-round exit. I just don't think they're good enough anymore. We. 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 Giants fan. Yeah. Giants. Oh, God. Giants fan oh, now. Oh, God. Look at Ray over there. He's so Ray excited. The, Ray's, Ray's dancing. <laughs> yeah. We got a new one. We got to what, four? How, four. Yeah, Austin, four. them two. Oh, God. Four. We're yep. at four. Giants fans. Daniel Jones. I don't know how I feel about Daniel Jones because he has – he. okay, he leads the league in game-winning drives. He has five. He's tied for most fourth-quarter comebacks with four with Matt Ryan. It's, I don't know if what that's a product of just not getting it done in the first half and first three quarters and having to play catch-up or if that means he's actually clutch. He's – He's a runner. I don't know if it's. Yeah. I don't. I, he is. It is a system quarterback kind of situation here. Like he's playing. The, the very, system is turn around and hand the ball off. He's playing he's very playing. safe. He's not turning <laughs> the ball over. He's only got two interceptions, which is so very uncharacteristic from how we've seen him in the past. But he's not turning the ball over. He's playing safe football, and that doesn't that doesn't lose you games, but that doesn't win you games in those big moments. He's a diet yeah. Kirk Cousins. A little bit. A little they're, they're, bit. They're, they're, they're playing wheels. it safe. They're playing it safe. They, they don't have, have any know. impressive wins, but I mean. They, they get it by the skin of their teeth. So changing New Jersey teams because they don't play in New York. Like, debate, debate your mother. I don't care. Uh, Tyler. <laughs> My team would be the New York Jets. They are – this. they were a team that came into the season surprising, much like the Giants, and it was great. But sadly, Brees Hall, their star rookie running back, got injured, and I just – they can't keep up. They, they didn't, J- James Robinson and Michael Carter can't replace his production – Zach Wilson is awful. He is horrendous. He's so bad. Three turnovers yesterday against New England. He has oh, one interceptions and touchdowns. It was, it's not. It's bad. It's horrific. He's terrible. But he's then, a second overall pick, and this is what he's doing week in, week out. But they're winning games. Like it's just, it's just that's, that's a common theme. They didn't win case, that's a common theme in case yeah. you can tell of they're this winning, segment. They're, they're winning, winning yes, games. They are winning games, but they're not winning because of their star, their supposedly star quarterback. They were winning because of their run game. They're winning because of their defense. They kept the ball out of Daniel Jones's hands. When Joe Flacco was quarterback, they were throwing the ball 40, 50 times a game in those first two games. Now, 20. Like, you'll be lucky to see Zach hit 30 pass attempts. They do not trust him with the ball in his hands. But they don't really have weapons on the offense. I they mean, got like, Garrett Wilson. He's been doing great as a rookie. Yeah, but Corey Elijah Davis, Moore wants out. Down. But they, they've got solid pieces around. No, no one great. Tyler Conklin, former Viking. The goat. He is great, Conk. We love him. (laughs) I think if you just give the Jets a few more years, because they are such a younger team now. This was Mm -hmm. supposed to be. uh, This year was supposed to be for uh, development and growth. But I mean, they're not doing too bad for having such a young draft. I mean, they did have like one of the best drafts last year, just like us. Sauce Gardner has been great. No, they're all their rookies have been. I mean, Rip Brees Hall, but like. They're, rookie, mm-hmm. they're winning games because they have defensive rookie of the year in Sauce Gardner and what would have been offensive rookie of the year in Brees Hall. Yeah, I think, I think he had it locked up. He easily – I mean, Kenneth Walker was not doing it. Damian Pierce mm-hmm. was not doing it. And those are the two highest now. Chris Olave was not going to touch Brees Hall. It, Brees Hall was a menace. Brees yeah. Hall was insane. I just – Their I, defense has been great, though. Robert Sala, his defense they brought from the Niners. Quinnen Williams has had a resurgence. John Franklin Myers, a very no-name guy, has been great. They – They've been, they're very well coached, much like the Giants. They're a very well coached team, yeah. but they're just, they can't, they're not going to finish in a playoff spot in a very no. competitive AFC. No. It's just not going to happen. I and mean, they're not seeing development from the most important position at quarterback. Quarterback. Like, do you think, okay, yeah. they move on from Zach Wilson? They need to. He's awful. Joe Flacco is better. He's probably, Zach Wilson is not a top 32 quarterback. He isn't. I mean, people said the same thing about Geno Smith last year. Look what he's doing. I feel like Zach Wilson I, is I was, bad. I want, I'm a believer in Geno. You are. I, I told Tyler to talk about this, and he said, I'm letting you know I called my shot on Geno Smith. I'm I like, did. Right, Tyler. All I right. did. They all laughed at me. <laughs> they wrote him off. I feel like Zach Wilson's <laughs> pretty bad, but he does have his flashes, but he's overall pretty terrible. Mm-hmm. He's just, yeah, he's just horrendous. Uh, so <laughs> <laughs> that's all the time we have for now. Thanks to both Lexi and Tyler for hopping on. We'll be right back to continue our NFL episode. See you later. HCF Hot Takes, I'm Johnny Jackson. 
We've got Emily Aaron to my right and Maluka Costa to my left. Hello and welcome to our segment of Hot Ones. I'm here with Noah Kemper and Grant Wheeler. Yep, I knew that. Grant Wheeler. <laughs> Listen, I'm, an, I'm a Bulls fan, but I just can't ever argue against Bo I can't argue against LeBron. I watched him my whole life. I've been going back and forth with this debate for a long time. It's gotta be Michael Jordan. Whatever she wanted. I would I would wear I would wake up in a maid costume for Doja Cat. <laughs> be brutal. Jeffrey Laux, no question. Richie, I would give it to Richie. It is not Richie. It is not Richie. No, it's Jeff. Richie's pronouns are he they because he cannot be him. <laughs> what? Oh, wait, wait a second. I'm gonna have to also agree and say Jeff. He always is spiffy. It might be Cameron. Cameron's Aww. had some good fits. Out of the women, Norelli always dresses really, really cute. Oh! oh. oh. <laughs> that went so awful. It's basketball. College football, I think, is the best sport to watch. If you don't like soccer, it's because you suck at it. I think college football is the best. Thanks for watching. Welcome back. So right now we got Nathaniel making his back-to-back -back combine appearances as Dwayne The Rock Johnson. And then we got Ray Batman over here. Uh, I've honestly lost count of how many times both you guys have been on, but it's always been a pleasure. You guys are on pretty much weekly when you two are on. So. How to get the two Giants fans. Yeah, you don't, we don't even need to introduce them. They, Y'all know the deal by now. So first off, it's mid-season pretty much through week eight. So if season ended today slash predictions, whatever. We're starting with MVP. So me and Nathaniel actually agree. We got Josh Allen. Ray has Patrick Mahomes. Ray, you're gonna have to argue with Nathan on this. Okay, let, 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 let me let me explain. Okay, so first of all, all Patrick, all um, Josh Allen has over Patrick Mahomes right now is yardage, and yardage isn't all that's cracked up to be. He has, right now, he has a head-to-head -head win too. Yeah, he has. But think about it. What's it called? Um, Josh Allen has the. Let me look at my. I gotta go to real my quick. bat notes. Real let me go quick. to my bat notes real quick. The Bills have the fifth-ranked passing defense right now, and the the freaking. Uh, and the freaking the Chiefs have the 27th pass racking defense, so it's, you can't really you can't really um, compare. You can't really compare their their performances against each other because the Chiefs' passing defense just ain't it, while the Josh Allen's defense is. That being said, Josh Allen has one less T lead than him and one more pick than him, and Patrick Mahomes lost one of the biggest receivers in the game right now in in Tyreek Hill. Tyreek. Hmm? In Tyreek, yeah. Yeah, in Tyreek yeah. Hill. And can you see any difference in their offense right now? And that's a testament to Patrick Mahomes. They're still one of the best offenses in the league, with, and they lost a critical player in Ty Tyreek Hill. Reek leads the league in yards. Nathaniel, Patrick yeah, Mahomes. I mean, you know, it's not Josh Allen's fault that the Chiefs' passing defense sucks. You know, he does everything for the Bills. I mean, he, he was also their leading rusher for a time, and he, he has to do everything for the Bills. If he doesn't play good, they don't win. Like, if the, with Mahomes, he's capable of carrying the team, but they have a decent team around him and uh, Allen's just been one of the best players in football and if he doesn't do everything for the Bills they're in a rough spot. Yeah but if you're gonna use the argument where he can't blame you can't blame his defense then you can't use the argument that he beat him head-to-head because -head you can't compare the quarterbacks because I'm willing to bet any amount of money if you switch the quarterbacks and had them play against each other Patrick Mahomes would win. Yeah but the Bills defense got dotted up by Tua so therefore Tua is better than Mahomes. <laughs> okay. uh, I cannot yeah. I'm gonna throw up I can't not believe I just said that. Scrub yeah. that from the internet. Oh I refuse. God. Um, so we're all in agreement here for Defensive Player of the Year. I think it's a runaway. Uh, Micah Parsons on the Cowboys. He's actually minus 125, really heavy favorite. Mm -hmm. TJ Watt injured. One of the Bosa brothers. I do not remember which one. Nick. Injured. Yeah, Nick Bosa injured. Aaron Donald's disappointing. It's, he's a monster. Yeah, it hurts to praise a Cowboys player like this, but yeah, he's been balling out. Like, you can't argue to get... I tried. I was looking. I can't find anybody. Yeah. Like, I feel very icky having to, uh, you know, praise a Cowboys player, but, I mean, Parsons... He does everything for the Cowboys defense and like going into a game like offense is no, hey, we have to stop Micah Parsons. He and they still can't stop him. He, like, he's, he goes he's like, he's like what Jabril Peppers should have been. If you if that name rings anything. The guy who played safety corner oh, linebacker. Yeah, no, he yeah, played he, for the Giants. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He played for yeah, Browns. He, he's what Jabril Peppers could have been, where he just he plays everything in that defensive back. And even the linebacker, he's just yeah. Eight, he's third in the league in sacks. Yeah, he's yeah. one of the biggest reasons why the Cowboys have one of the best defenses in the league right he now. Can, he can Parsons. cover too. Yeah, he, well, eh, this year he's been weak in coverage. But, like, he can. He can. But, I mean, he's not just a pass rusher. No, but, I mean, that's how they use him because I don't yeah, know what they have in the cornerback. No I'm, I'm not going to lie. I don't know much about the Cowboys' secondary depth chart. So, as you should. As yeah. I should. Yeah. I, that, is not my, that is not my division. So, we have 
a, we're stealing it from NBA. It's not a thing. It should be a, uh, an award. Instead, they have comeback, whatever. Most improved. We're starting with Nathaniel. It has to be Geno Smith. I mean, everyone was writing off the Seahawks, and everyone was writing off Geno Smith, but he didn't write back. And now the Seahawks are 5-3. and three. Geno Smith's thrown 13 touchdowns and only three interceptions. I mean, without him, they aren't where they are. And everyone thought with the trade of Russell Wilson, they would just fall off. But that has not been the case. If anything, like, they've gotten better, which is shocking to say. I hate that quote. I hate the I didn't write back. And I, 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 it doesn't make sense. I heard it, and I was like, that does not make sense. And then it... Everybody ran with it, and I didn't have the heart to tell people it's stupid. But here we go, it's stupid. <laughs> You're telling yeah. me it's stupid on air? How dare you? I, I'll tell you it's stupid off air, too. I don't, that doesn't change anything. For me, my most improved player has got to be Jalen Hurts. He's been balling out this, week, this year. He's led his team to an undefeated record, which if you look last year, they were 9-8. and eight. They were a hair over 500. And to lead this, any team that's over 500 or is winning games like this, it's because of their quarterback. It's a quarterback-driven league. And he's already got, let me see, let me look at my back notes here real quick. <laughs> he's already got 10 touchdowns on the season with six rushing. I think the best part of this is that when you do that, I can hear your mic just scrape up against your entire <laughs> chest plate. <laughs> but no, the way, obviously, it hurts is so much better compared to last season. He's able to throw the ball. But also the trade of A.J. Brown was huge. I mean, having that number one wide receiver, it's just, you know, it's the safety blanket for him, and that's... You know, he's really elevated their offense along with the improvement of Jalen Hurts. And complimenting two NFC East teams, uh, can we uh, change topic? No, we're not, actually. Well, yeah, we are. The only thing I hate is just he's, I uh, just look at him, and he's, ob he's looking better than Dak. Honestly, I'd say he's the best quarterback in the NFC East, he and is, it's not a question. He is. He's third in MVP. I, he doesn't win MVP this year, obviously, but mm -hmm. I think that in NFL, or even NBA, too, for to win MVP, you have to have the year in front of it to kind of put your name out there, and mm -hmm. I think he's starting his next year. MVP run. I don't mm -hmm. think he's going to win it, but like I think oh, no. he really is starting it where he's going to finish top three this year and probably top two next year. My most improved, a little deep cut, uh, Patriots running back Ramondre Stevenson. Uh, Ray's sad because I don't know why. He just started laughing. <laughs> Ramondre Stevenson has been a menace. Um, so he's second year out of Oklahoma. He split reps bad with Damian Harris last year. I, I had him on my fantasy football draft queue last year, and I messed up my queue and my thing froze, and I auto him in the seventh round. So that was I, I obviously did not win that league. That was that was rough. But this year, he's he's going crazy. He's kind of not much like carrying the offense because the offense is bad, but he's their run game, and he's a good passing uh, little check down blanket for whoever they want to go between Mac Jones, Bailey Zappi. Who quarterback controversy in New England is this happening? Yeah, I feel like this is it's like history repeating itself with that quarterback um, controversy. I felt like I'm, I'm looking at Drew Bledsoe getting replaced again. You know, they say if you have two quarterbacks, you have none. Mm -hmm. So we'll see how it plays out. I mean, Mac Jones played a little better against the Jets, but Zach Wilson, you know, did a yeah, Zach, Zach really Wilson did. did his part for the Patriots, which he's not supposed to do, but he <laughs> did. All right, so that's for most improved. For most surprising, I'm going to go with – Josh Jacobs. I mean, last year he like splitting like as a Ramondre Stevenson split carries with Damian Harris. Last year, Josh Jacobs was splitting carries with literally anyone and everyone. I want to say they had Kenyon Drake. They had Brandon Bolden. They still have. And in the last five games, Josh Jacobs has turned up. He has 830 total yards, and I want to say like 700 are just only in the last five games. He started slow, but then he got a, like a 25 carry game, and ever since then he's been a menace. That team is bad though. The Raiders are no. I don't know what the Raiders are. They're 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 tanking. I don't know what they're trying to do. Are they are they gambling or something? I don't know. The Raiders is like they're trying to lose football games. No, I mean they they thought they were going to get an upgrade with bringing in Josh McDaniels as head coach, bringing the New England offense, and they've only regressed. It's um, I I don't. Mm, if it keeps on going like this, does he stay for a second year? I don't know. I don't know why any team would hire Josh McDaniels after what he did in Denver. I know he won it's a playoff been, game, but like he was really bad after that he was not that good before that and, and that was just Tebow magic and especially after what he did to the Colts yeah he swerved them, the them. Altar, you know? hey Devontae how's that Hall of Fame quarterback treating you Derek Carr's bad well no uh, <laughs> Derek Carr's been bad let's put it that way Derek Carr's very good Derek Carr's been bad mm -hmm. I don't know I don't know why I wouldn't say he's been bad but hmm. um so for most uh, surprising, we have... Oh, I got uh, Saquon Barkley. Yeah, now, here, this is when the Giants propaganda starts. I'm ready. I'll just, right, yeah, I'll just me, not talk. Dude, yeah, dude. Yeah, yeah, we, we, we can we carry got, the rest of the segment got, if you want to. Barkley has been amazing. Everyone's been telling me coming into the season, he's a dead man walking. He's, he's, not, he's, not playing, he's not playing well anymore. But look at the season. He's leading the league in rushing and carrying his team. He's really, it's like we're in a time machine right now playing 90s football. 
playing ball control football and ground, running the ball down your throat. He's leading the league in rushing. He's two yards off of being second in receiving in his team. So he's literally the only reason the Giants are this are playing as good as they are right now. I mean, when he's healthy, he's the best running back in football. Mm. Enough said. Mm, is everybody healthy in that scenario? Because I have McCaffrey and Derrick Henry over him. McCaffrey's no. built like Saquon a can do like everything. Die. You look, look at him wrong. Saquon he'll... Barkley isn't. Well, look at his offensive line throughout his career. It's been historically that horrible. Make him not built like a toothpick. You seen mm. that dude's thigh? Toothpick? 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 It sounded like toothpick. Sorry. No, it, like just because like I don't. I have an issue saying Saquon's the best. He's top three. But I don't have him above McCaffrey or Derrick Henry. I think McCaffrey's because, never healthy. I can I can live with Derrick Henry, but McCaffrey's never healthy enough. And not and and Saquon Barkley is. I'm talking about this season right now. You would pick you pick McCaffrey over uh, uh, Saquon in right the now. Niners' offense. Absolutely. No, not the Niners' offense. We're it doesn't matter. I'm taking him right now, and McCaffrey's on the Niners. So you put McCaffrey on the Giants' offense, and he's still performing this good. I, he's a better dump off than Saquon Barkley. It's like, so better no, he's, he's, he's a better check down than Saquon Barkley. I don't think that's a debate. I think Trish McCaffrey just got was injured the past year, so people forgot how good he was. He threw I mean, he got a rushing, a passing, and a receiving touchdown yesterday. That was Come pretty on. good. Yeah. He's he's the white Debo Samuel. They happen to have two. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh. The he's white like, Debo he just, Samuel. He, he Christian McCaffrey is still the best. I, oh, he's great. I mean, it's the NFL's better when they're both healthy, and we've been luckily, you know, they've both been able to stay on the field. Yeah, because they're really bringing it back to the NFL's roots. Because it's all a bit, it's all about the ground and pound and control of the game. The forward but pass it, was a mistake. <laughs> <laughs> but, but I'd say it's better now because running backs, you know, back then they weren't asked to do as much as these running backs. Mm -hmm. I mean, there was obviously NFL has eras. Like now, you see kind of running backs have five years and then they're out. Like you saw how yeah, quick it's, Le'Veon it's Bell just, and Todd Gurley were. You see everything else. They just kind of. Yeah, it's that's it's why people such don't draft running backs. Tough mm -hmm. position. It's car crash after car crash. After car crash, and most times you get up to your contract, you get franchise tag, and by then you're the crime. Yeah, you don't then get you paid have injuries. Yeah, the I mean, defenses are amazing right now. They're they're just they're only getting bigger and stronger and faster as the years go by. I mean, yeah, I the too much. So many rules are about protecting the quarterback is became a passing league. That's how it. That's how it develops. That's how ebbs and flows of the game. Yeah, you look at Tom Brady wrong, and it's 15 yards of 15 <laughs> yards penalty. God, God forbid you sack him. Yeah, yeah. and it's, yeah. it's a roughing the passer. I mean, Saquon Barkley. What was he? Second, third. We're gonna talk about the Giants a lot. I know you guys are looking forward. Yeah, to Yeah, we'll be yeah. back on the show. Today. He's, yeah. he's right now. Let me look at my oh back my notes. Oh my god. Back notes. He's what? right now. He's third. He's, he's third in yards per. He's third in yards per carry. First in total yards. He's had one more game than Chubb and Henry. Yeah, but like, what 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 what, what draft was? He was like the third pick. Yeah, he was a second pick. Second, second or third? Yeah, yeah, I don't. You never right, take a running back that high. I don't right, know. Dave Gettleman. Yeah, we don't talk about that guy. He doesn't exist in our in Giants yeah, history. And what makes it what makes it more impressive about Saquon is that everyone knows he's getting the ball. Because what is Daniel Jones gonna do? He's the ultimate handoff master. Because that's all he does. He's the he's the Hall of Fame game manager right now. Because he ain't gonna win us any playoff games. This team goes as far as Saquon goes. So that's what makes it more impressive. It's because we know Daniel Jones ain't gonna dot up anybody. He'll get like one, maybe two, if we're lucky. Good passes in the game. But it's all Saquon. He has five game-winning drives, and he's thrown. I mean, he can't throw the ball when he has to. They need to get another receiver badly. Mm -hmm. But part of that's like they don't quite have the money, thanks to uh, Dave Gettleman. <laughs> it's like the, the going, money is tied up in Kenny Galladay, who is yeah, a and net Kenny Galladay. Right it's, mm -hmm. He was he was literally so bad for. He made yeah. off like a bandit. He, I mean, Matthew Stafford made him kind of like Matthew Stafford, like oh, Kenny Galladay, because he was like a deep threat guy, and Daniel Jones doesn't do that. Mm -hmm. Like yeah. Matthew Stafford was just like, hey, Kenny Galladay, hey, Marvin Jones, go deep and I will find you and you will catch the ball. Mm -hmm. And Daniel Jones just can't. I don't, like, he, he's just, a, like I said, he's a runner. Like he just, he's probably the third, fourth most mobile quarterback in the league. I mean, oh, well, hold on. Never mind. I just I completely say, forgot about Kyler Murray. Uh, Josh Lamar, Kyler. He's around four five, Mahomes is five. mobile. Uh, not as mobile not as, as Daniel mobile Jones. As Are we including Trey Lance or is he dead to us? Uh, his ankle snapped right now. Yeah. Hey, hey Patrick Mahomes don't trip over ghosts. Why are we? Yeah, Daniel that Jones. Is, you're not wrong. He, uh, that, that was a, he, what was he clocked next gen stats fastest of Yeah, he was running a little too season. fast and yeah. he just he, face planted. He, uh, ran out, he ran out of stamina mid, mid run. He just face, he just. No he matter just, how good the run is, if you fall by, that's going to be, that's going to be meme fall of eternity. That's the, that's the Giants butt fumble. I'm word to Mark Sanchez. Shout out, shout out to Sanchez. Okay, I don't, don't, that doesn't belong in the no, same breath. Dude, butt fumble? No. Nah, if he would have fumbled and maybe, no, nah, but. Uh, I don't Listen, like Daniel Jones, Mark but Sanchez Mark Sanchez literally ran into the butt of an offensive lineman. And at least Daniel Jones, like, you know, at least he ran like 80 yards before face planting, you know. Mark Sanchez ran into the butt crack of his offensive lineman. <laughs> 
fumbled, and the Patriots ran it back for a touchdown. Yeah, but he's the GOAT. That was prime Thanksgiving entertainment. <laughs> that, was, that was literally like everyone's going to chill and just have fun around Thanksgiving and laugh at the Jets somehow. Say what you, wanna, say what you want about Mark Sanchez. It was entertaining to watch. <laughs> that, yeah, I mean, two FC championship games care about defense. Anyways, so Nathaniel, oh, yeah. I doubt that was – we, we were going – we were having too much fun. I went so with, surprising for Nathaniel, go. I went with Russell Wilson. You know, if he was a chef, you know, Mark uh, – Chef Ramsey would be dead right now. You know, he'd be so pissed off at him. It's been – you know, they thought trading the Broncos traded for him. They thought he was going to elevate the team. Like, oh, this is the best supporting cast he has. He has an offensive-minded coach. And while Nathaniel Hackett definitely hasn't helped him, I mean, you look and just Russell Wilson just isn't the same guy. He's just, he's, um, they, that trade and that contract is going to handicap the Broncos for years to come. They don't have any of their first-round picks for the next, what, they don't have it years. this year. And then, yeah, they're, they're going to get a, they're gonna get a top, a bottom 10 record, top 10 pick maybe, and then Seattle's going to get it and somehow, some way. I know right now we're seeing Pete Carroll deserved a lot more credit for Russell Wilson's career. And the defense. The yeah, defense. it's a, also a credit to Nathaniel Hack and how horrible he's been because I'm generally concerned that, that he doesn't know how to tell time. Someone needs to, someone needs to put him, are you smarter than the fifth grader and see what he could do. That's what babbles because most co- most teams have a, a coaches for everything and usually mm-hmm. there's a coach to keep them off the field there's an assistant coach to make sure the timing is they know and I don't know what they did I the Broncos biggest mistake was hiring so many new coaches like mm-hmm. young guys that they don't have the veteran experience from the coaching staff yeah no they need they could have used another offensive coordinator defensive corner coordinator with head coaching experience or experience at least experience in that position because I mean I don't think Nathaniel Hackett's like the worst play caller I mean you look at what he did with the Jaguars and Blake Bortles you know, Bortles is not the best quarterback, and they got to the AFC Championship game. But Carey him as a head guys. coach is a completely different ball of wax. And I mean, there is rumors he's going to be fired if they lost in London. Yeah. That being uh, said, though, he has been playing horrible the first half of the season. But let's remember when the when Brady went to the Bucks for his first season, he turned it around the half season marker. So we got to see how he goes because right now he can make adjustments. He can still come back from this. Yeah, but that was with Bruce Arians as your head coach, and he's. As an and a top defense in the league. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like I, the Russell Wilson, his injuries are trying to catch up to him. He's kind of getting mm-hmm. old. He most of Russ's magic was running around in the pocket, scrambling, yeah. making plays with his feet. He can't do that. He's injured, tacked up. They are paying him forty-five, fifty million dollars when he is forty years old. I can tell you the, that is a robbery. I can tell you the pressure's getting to him. I don't know if you guys saw his post-game press conference, but for Broncos first country, time, let's ride! No, he didn't say it for the one time. Yes, he said it. He said it this year. Oh, he said, he said it. it. He said it this week, and then the reporter immediately looked time. away and went, "Yeah, Laura Rutledge looked disgusted. Yeah, she mm-hmm. she cringed immediately. Broncos country, let's cry. Broncos country, let's limp. And he's that. Those are my favorite right now. Just Broncos country, let's blank stuff. It's just hilarious. He's like a bootleg Peyton Manning. <laughs> <laughs> At least he can move a little bit. You mm-hmm. know? A little. I mean, I mean it's. He's just injuries. Like yeah. he's just not been good. Broncos games are so painful to watch. It's it's really. It's bad. like watching paint dry. It's they've had two of the worst games of the year so far. And it's, on prime time too. Oh, they have six prime time games if you count London. There's, I don't know who did that, but send them to solitary. They need to repent for their sins. <laughs> yeah. It's disgusting. Whoever made the schedule it didn't. I mean them and the Commanders and Bears getting a lot of time on prime time. Yeah, not, and his teammates are starting to come out the woodwork about how he was treated different in Seattle. Because I see you see men like Richard Sermon talking about how yeah, he was held to even, a different standard than everyone else. And I don't mean in a good way. I mean in a bad way. And even Tyler Lockett after the Seahawks won yesterday, he was like, "It's we're a much better team when no one's buying." for credit that tells something you something like about his like, leadship ability no, everyone's he's, taking shots at him now. hashtag exposed i'm not sh- hashtag fraud <laughs> I, i'm not sure if he's like i don't know any whatever it's a wrap on this episode i hope you all enjoyed it happy birthday to without warning by 21 savage and metro Boomin. five years old today solid album kickstarted 21 savage's mainstream career in my opinion same time next week hopefully this time drake and 21 savage drop their album so we can talk about it peace Things gon' change when I really hit the field. Undefeated chance, man, you know what's the deal. Tryna find a kid, I'm in a field doing drills. Boy, you just a sucker, you ain't never keep it real. Three rings in my hand, I'm a warrior to the max. When I hang it up, they gon' have to give me plaques. Step up in the building and I only bring the facts. When I make a highlight, they gon' replay, run it back, okay? Always locked in, I don't got time to lack. Saying he the best, he could take a lap. Batting 1,000 when you check the stats. Boy, is you ready yet? Yeah.